Okay, so I'm just going to show you my uh, electrolysis setup. Uh, it's very simple, pretty straightforward. One of the things you need to remember is that the object of this is line of sight. So the more electrodes you have in your bucket, the better. Um, we'll start off with the basics in this bucket here. I mean, we're talking nylon brush for cleaning off those hard to, hard to get rust spots off. Some softer brushes that I use to uh, get the dirt and everything off before the uh, piece, um, which is generally metal, obviously, goes into the electrolysis machine. Some spare wire nuts in a variety of sizes. And then some extra alligator clips. What I like to do with the alligator clips and the wire nuts is if I have, um, let's say I've got multiple items that I want to go in. Well, I can put up to four on this. Um, look at the coating. That's black for negative. That means that the tool or the metal objects um, that you're going to be putting into the electrolysis machine or bucket to be cleaned is always hooked up to the negative um, terminal of your battery charger. The bucket itself well, actually, let's start off with this. You can make them in all different sizes. This is one for small objects. I'm talking really small. Um, this will just sit on the counter. What I've got is a piece of rebar that's been wired through the plastic. And what that does is it keeps it in place, but it makes, it allows me to connect anywhere to the rebar without having to worry about connection problems. Um, Obviously, the, electro the electrode that goes onto the, uh, or the clip that goes onto the item being cleaned, and then to the, the battery terminal. Now, on a bigger scale, which is what I use most often, it's a five gallon bucket. You can pick them up, a few bucks, any hardware store. Um, now, in here, I've got five rebar electrodes. I bought one piece of rebar. Use the angle grinder and cut right through it. You can use a hacksaw if you don't have an angle grinder or a sawzall, but it will take you forever. There's rust on here, that's no problem. See, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's corrosion on the ends of the rebar. That's because that's where the uh, um, deterioration comes from when you're doing the electrolysis. Now, this rebar has been in here for probably a good two to three years, maybe a little bit longer. Again, same concept, wired into the wire nuts. This is how I've done this one. Rebar is wired, baling wire, through the plastic into a wire nut that connects the electrode, which goes, you know, the wiring that goes to the next electrode. Same thing, all the way around the bucket. On the very last electrode, it goes into an alligator clip. And the reason I use an alligator clip is because this wire is so thin, I needed something larger for my battery terminal, uh, or my battery clip to clip onto. Works perfect. So with that, you can put a piece of wood or something across, hang the piece down, um, and use some kind of wire or string or whatever, it doesn't matter. But you need to have your object completely submerged in your solution. And we'll get to solutions in a second. What that does is that allows you to move and pick up your item, you know, at any time. But I will tell you this, safety first, always, always, always turn off your charger and unplug it from the wall before touching any of this. You don't want to get a shock or anything like that. I know there's people out there who don't don't mind a little electricity, but guess what? Safety first, because you know you never know it could kill you. Um, and by the way, this is for your information and educational purposes only. <laughs> Use at your own discretion. So again, red wire goes to the positive. Now we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about by battery charger and safety. I have a 
six foot power strip that plugs into my battery charger. Now this is a battery charger I picked up at uh, one of the auto parts stores. It's a Schumacher um, MC1. Now this is like a motorcycle battery charger. It charges six and 12 volts batteries. It is manual. I would suggest getting a manual because automatics will shut down when they think it's time to shut down or if they overheat or anything like that. Okay, the reason I got a 6 and a 12, 6 volts, small objects, 12 volts speeds up the process for larger objects. Cannonballs, flat irons, um, thicker metal that have a lot of meat on them, go ahead and use the 12 volts. Um, usually I start at 6 for the first couple of minutes and then I bump it up to 12 depending on how many bubbles I see coming up. This is not plugged in it right now, so basically this is your red, which is positive. I will just usually attach it to the alligator clip like that, and we're good. Plastic, no problems. Take your negative. This negative will be attached to some sort of, you know, um, item such as this. I'll connect this up to here and I can do four smaller objects or um, I don't know where it's at but I can show you on this one. Don't let the color fool you. It's just a double-ended alligator clip. I'll clip this. Put this down. Just clip it on there. Make a nice connection. This will go to one larger piece. Um, for instance, a a screw that's been put into some sort of relic or something. And as a matter of fact, I got one sitting up here. This here's a flat iron. It's got a Texas star or something on there. Um, completely right. See, the rest is just falling off. So it's got some meat under it. It is solid. It probably weighs a good five pounds. Um, I drilled a screw, drilled a hole, put a screw in there. Again, do not let this red color fool you. This is not the positive. This is a negative. I just didn't have enough uh, black wire. This will connect onto that screw. Okay? Or, if worse comes to worse, let's do it for this sake of purposes here. Black, negative to your tool or your metal object. This goes into the bucket. Wherever this is in the bucket, it's line of sight. So I've got five different points of lines hitting this item. And this will clean it quicker instead of using one. Because if you use one, you've got to rotate and flip and everything else. Uh, again, it's a basic, simple setup. The most important thing about this is I have triple safety. I've got the power of the charger goes into the power strip. Okay? Power strip gets plugged into the wall. Notice the switch is off. When I flip this on, I'm good to go. Safety, so I don't unplug directly from this while the power is on because there is no on-off switch here. It's based on when it makes contact with the terminals. So I just flip this off and I'll unplug the strip from the wall. Make sure there's absolutely no chance of any electricity going through my body. It's a very simple setup. It's pretty safe. Use it wisely and your cleans can come out pretty darn nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the batch probably uh, right now and I will uh, do another part of this and show you what the uh, end results are. Hope you enjoyed it.